the Russians are not going to roll over and play dead. In fact, what the Russians are going to do is they're going to crush the Ukrainians. They're going to bring out the big guns. They're going to turn places like Kiev and other cities in Ukraine into rubble. They're going to do Fallujahs. They're going to do Mosul's. They're going to do Grozny's. You know what happened in World War II when the United States was faced with the possibility of having to invade the Japanese home islands in early 1945. The idea of invading the Japanese home islands after what happened at Iwo Jima and then later what happened in Okinawa really spooked us. So you know what we did? We decided to burn Japanese cities to the ground starting on March 10th, 1945. We killed more people the first night we firebombed Tokyo than we killed at either Hiroshima or Nagasaki. And we were systematically burning Japanese cities to the ground. Why? Because we did not want to invade the Japanese main islands. When a great power feels threatened, when it... the Russians are going to pull out all stops in Ukraine to make sure that they win. And then there's the nuclear dimension to this. The Russians have already put their nuclear weapons on high alert. This is a really significant development because what they were doing was sending us a very powerful signal as to how seriously they take this crisis and what's going on. So again, if we start winning and the Russians start losing, you want to understand that what we're talking about doing here is backing a nuclear armed great power that sees what's happening as an existential threat into a corner. This is really dangerous. Go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. I don't think that what happened in the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis was as threatening to us as this situation is to the Russians. But if you go back and look at how American decision makers thought at the time, they were scared stiff.